Well, welcome to this season of Lent, this season that allows us some space to pause, to be intentional about our lives and our faith, and to be able to look deep inside, to be able to evaluate and figure out the places that are holding us back from being able to live our full selves, that fully abundant life that God wants us to live into, those places that hold us back from going to those spaces that God would have us go, those things that hold us back from being in right relationship with God and with others. You know, Lent is a season where we think about giving up something so that we can draw closer to God or adding something new, a, a spiritual practice that helps us draw closer in that way. So did you give something up this year or did you add something? You know, in years past, uh, I've heard people giving up things like um, red meat, chocolate. This, this last week during drive through ashes, somebody actually came through and said how miserable they were on that first day of Lent because they had chosen to give up caffeine and it was already hurting them deep within. I hope that if you gave up something, it wasn't something that is gonna cause you a lot of pain or angst, but it is something that helps you draw near to God. Or, or did you add something this year? Did you add a devotional time, a prayer time? And if you're looking for something to add, I want to remind you about those Wednesday Lenten classes on that book study that we are doing. You can come at 1030 or at 630 in the evening. But we'd love for you to be able to join in that way and set aside a little bit of time and space during this season. Well, whatever you do, we pray that it brings you blessing. Lent, the first Sunday, always gives us this story, this powerful story of Jesus being tempted in the wilderness. If you remember, Jesus is baptized. He is fully immersed in the waters, and he hears that voice saying, This is my son, my beloved, in whom I am well pleased. So Jesus, in that identity of being God's son, and then he goes out into the wilderness for 40 days. He goes out trying to test himself, maybe, trying to find out who he is, some intentional space to go and to be alone. And while he is in that intentional space, 40 days later, he is exhausted and hungry, and it is then that Satan comes and tempts him tempts him with food, tempts him with power, tempts him with being able to remove that which brings him discomfort. Have you ever been tempted in such a way? Maybe it was something little, you know, maybe it was to tell a lie that then got into a bigger lie and a bigger lie. Maybe you were tempted to road rage one day home or you're tempted, um, you know, to be rude to somebody in a store or a restaurant, right? We all have those little temptation moments, but we also, during certain seasons of our lives, face these bigger temptations, these bigger temptations to feed and to satisfy that which we feel like we are missing or that which we feel like we are entitled to. We, we have these bigger moments of temptation, of power, and of maybe stepping on other people to get uh, more power or to get what we feel like is coming to us. We have temptations of removing the discomfort from our lives so that we might be able to be comfortable, but it doesn't bring us or others goodness. What are you most tempted with? What are the things that really pull on that temptation string? And when are you most tempted? When are those times in which you can say no to that temptation pretty easily, but then um, there are other, those other spaces that are harder for you to say no to that temptation and you know that you will fall prey to that. Lent allows us that space to be able to reflect on those temptations. 
When I was doing Ash Wednesday service with our preschool kids, one of the questions that I asked them were, have any of you ever been naughty? Have any of you ever done anything wrong? And you know, you'd be amazed because almost all of those kids, 230 of them, almost all of them had never done anything wrong or been naughty. If I were to ask you the same question, I bet you would, I would get a few reluctant hands that were up, but probably not many. Because it's hard for us to recognize and to admit that we have done something wrong, that we fall prey to temptation. It's hard for us. We get caught up in our shame and our guilt. We see this all the way back to the Garden of Eden when Eve and Adam are tempted with that fruit. And if you remember, after they eat the fruit, they go and they hide from God. They hide from God because they're naked, because now they know. We often try to hide hide our sins, hide the ways in which we have fallen into temptation, hide the ways in which we have hurt ourselves, hurt others, um, even that relationship with God. We are fall prey to shame pretty quickly and easily. But the thing is, is that if we take this time in Lent to be able to reflect on our lives we realize that there is no shame in being human, that we all have temptations that we face, that there are times in which we fall into that temptation easier than others. And we're able to have some grace with ourselves because God has grace for us, because God looks at us and reminds us that we are beloved children of God, because God looks at us and sees us in that baptism moment and remembers that we are loved and tries to remind us that we are loved as well. No matter what we do, no matter the temptations that we face, no matter if we are strong, like we see Jesus be strong, or if we're weak and we fall into temptation, we are loved. The hard part for us is to claim that to continue to live into the identity of who God sees us to be as beloved children of God. And instead, when we fall into temptation, we put on that shame. We hide our faces. We don't live into our identities. Jesus is in that moment of temptation, hungry, tired, exhausted, uncomfortable, and Jesus is able to remain in his identity as the Son of God. And as we look at Jesus and the ways in which he was able to confront that temptation by using God's word, by using the words um, that of life, of truth, we see a way in which we are able to resist those temptations as well. How we are able to stand strong in our identity of who God has created us to be. How we are able to live into that identity, whether we're tired, whether we're exhausted, whether we're hungry, whether we're uncomfortable and we just want things to go back the way that they were. We are able to stand in God's truth, in God's power, and we are able to resist that temptation if we are centered and grounded in who we are in Christ. There is this old Native American story that has been passed down from generation to generation. And there's different versions of it, but it goes something like this. There was a man had two dogs. One was black, one was white, one was... Um, was good and one was evil, but they always liked to fight. These dogs would fight, 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 fight. And the guy knew who would win every single time. And so somebody asked him about those dogs, about the ways in which they fought, about how he knew which one would win. And he said, you see, Inside of me, there are also two dogs that are fighting, one that is good and one that is bad. And I know which one will win. It's the one that I feed. 
in each of us, we have these two spaces that are fighting, that good and that evil, right? That identity in God and then also that identity that the world tells us we are or Satan tells us that we are, that shame, um, that we're not good enough, that we need more. And which one will win in those moments in our lives, especially the moments that we're tired and exhausted and hungry, is the one that we feed. Lent allows us space to be able to feed the good, to be able to feed and center ourselves in who God calls us to be, who God sees us as, to be able to center ourselves in that love that God has for us. So as we go forward into Lent, remember that you're human, <laughs> that you're going to make mistakes, that we're going to fall in tempt into temptation. But I pray that you find space to be able to ground yourself in the love and goodness of God to be able to claim your identity and not fall into shame and not fall into temptation that the world gives to us, the ways in which we feel like we're entitled to things or that we um, as children of God should have that, but we are able to center ourselves in the good, the ways that bring goodness, not only to our own lives, but to the lives of others. And when we feel tempted, when we feel like temptation is knocking on our door, that we are to remember those words that Jesus said. God's word. God's word says, this is the truth. This is the light. This is the identity in which I ground myself. May you find some space this week to be able to ground yourself in those words of Jesus. And to remember that you are a beloved child of God, even when you fall into temptation. And may you live out that identity of goodness and love in the world wherever you go. Amen.